Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to be able to automatically highlight the active row and or column. Now, if you're in Excel 365, there's a really easy way of doing this, but I will show you another method that you can use in any version of Excel. So for Excel 365 users, you just need to hop over to the View tab on your ribbon. And there's an option here called Focus Cell. If you activate that option, you can then click anywhere in your data and it will highlight the active row and column. If you don't want that particular color as your highlight color, you can change it in this menu. Now with that method, it does actually highlight the entire sheet column and the entire sheet row. So if you don't want that, you only want to highlight cells within your data, you might also want to use this second method. Now this second method uses conditional formatting, and we need to use a number of functions within the conditional formatting. First of all, we'll look at highlighting rows. And the first function we would use is a function called row. So it's equals row, open bracket, close bracket. And if I press enter, you can see what it's doing is it's returning the row number for that cell. And if I copied it down, you would see it continues to do that down the sheet. Now the other function you need to know about is called cell. And what I'm going to do is specify row as my info type, press enter. Now what that will do is it will return the row number of a cell that I select. So if I select a new cell, I will need to manually refresh the spreadsheet. So I pressed F9 on my keyboard to do that. But you can see it's returned 20, which is the row number for this cell. Now that need to press F9 to refresh will overcome once we've set up the conditional formatting. So those are the two functions we need to use, and this is how we would use them within conditional formatting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select all of the cells that need to have this conditional formatting applied. So I click into A2, and then Control Shift, right arrow key, will select that row, and then down arrow key, will select down to the last consecutive row, Control backspace will get me back to the active cell, the first cell I've selected. Then I'm going to go to the Home tab on my ribbon, Conditional Formatting, New Rule, Use a Formula to determine which cells to format. Now, this is the formula we've got to write. Equals row, equals cell, and then in brackets, in quotation marks, row. So then I choose a color for my highlighting, which is that yellow, click on OK, and then click on OK again. Now you can see it's highlighted the row for the active cell, but at the moment, if I click into another cell, it doesn't adjust the conditional formatting. And that's because I need to automatically refresh that cell function. Now to do that, you right click on the Sheet tab, you go to View Code, and then where it currently says general up here, change that to worksheet. And then between these two lines of code, you write target dot calculate. You can then close this Visual Basic Editor window down. And now when you click into a cell, it will highlight the whole row. Now, if instead of the row, you wanted the column highlighted, or maybe you want both the row and the column highlighted, this is what you would do. So again, you'd need to select all of the data. You go back to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now the formula for this would be equals column. Now this works in the same way as the row function. It returns the column number, and then we'd say, does that equal to cell? And obviously for cell, we're not referring to the row number, but we need to refer to the column number. So that's col. Then I choose a color, click on OK, click on OK. And now if I click into a cell, it will highlight both the column and the row. If you just wanted the column highlighted, then just go back to conditional formatting, manage rules, and you would delete this conditional format. Now, because we've used some VBA code 
to achieve this, when you save your file, it needs to be saved as a macro enabled workbook. If you save it as a normal workbook, you'll lose that functionality. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.